Welcome back to the great outdoors, everybody. We are in it. This is it. This is go time. It's all been leading up to this, man. My my archery journey this year. It, we are getting down to the wire. So hopefully you've been following along. If you haven't, subscribe to the channel. Check out my outdoor content. I do hunting, fishing, camping, uh, just all the greats. I have been working towards this goal of getting a white-tailed deer with a bow that I've made. And uh, today's video, we're gonna be scouting uh, here at deer camp, right in the middle of Texas, beautiful hill country, and we're just starting to get some cool weather. Thank you, Lord. So hopefully we're going to get a deer within 10 yards. That's really the goal. That's my confident zone I past that. Um, I just don't really feel confident with the traditional uh, primitive style bow. I do have my CP28. This is going to be the backup plan if we can't get a deer within 10 yards, but there's something about having an animal right there in front of you where you can, you can hear uh, every step they make, their breathing, uh, you can literally see their, their whiskers on their, around their nostrils and everything. It's, it's insane, guys. It's, it's the most heart-pumping thing that I have found in the outdoors. And hopefully, the work that we're putting in today, in this video, in the next couple of days, is going to lead to a successful archery tag field. Uh, on opening weekend. So we are here a few days before the season opens. Today's video brought to you by Bucks, Bucks Hunting. If you guys aren't familiar with it, I'll leave a link down below. Uh, they got some sick new performance uh, long sleeves for hunting this year. Really cool buck pattern, nice fit to it, face mask built in, hood, all of that perfect for hunting this weather that we're in right now. Um, of course, have hoodies and all that kind of stuff, but also accessories, packs. So I actually got into deer camp last night. I was able to scout for just a little bit. I rode around the ATV. I checked a couple of uh, uh, feeders that um, I usually see some deer at, and I saw some bucks. Um, and that's an opportunity we, we could have is to get like a, a smaller buck or a cull buck. I haven't seen any big bucks running around just yet. And this morning I got up early and I actually went and sat, and I found the perfect candidate for what we're looking for. I found a lone doe. Uh, she hung around for probably 30 minutes, and I sat in, in a rifle tower blind and just kind of looked out. Uh, wind was perfect. What I've been looking at this week is we're gonna have an east wind, it's sort of strange. We're gonna have this like straight out of the east wind towards the opening day. I'm going to be putting a ground blind out at one of these spots and I've identified four, four potential spots that have close enough tree cover uh, to these feeders that I think I can get to suck the deer away from. I can have a chance of getting these deer in if they come to the corn, which they usually do, but right now we have tons of acorns that are starting to drop. Uh, the, the deer this morning didn't even go into the feeder pen, which was kind of concerning. I guess there was just a lot. To, to feed on. I think this is going to be challenging to get the deer to come into the corn, as weird as that sounds. But if we play our win right and you know we get lucky, I think we're gonna have a shot. I did have time last night to go set up one camera and I have some photos on it. I just grabbed it. So we're gonna see what's on that and go from there. All right guys, we're gonna look at this SD card. Have a little Granola crunch. First freeze dried meal of the season. A lot of cinnamon in there. Let's see what we got. Alright, first picture is my face. Okay, we got a doe, but it is at night. Zero daytime photos. That is disappointing. That's the one. That's the one we want right there. I mean that's her. That's Sally. Need her in the daytime. There's my face. Nice juicy one. The reason that I'm wanting a doe is because I'm gonna be less nervous on a doe. I mean, unless it's just like a scrubby scrub buck. Last year I injured a buck and it just it really hurt my feelings for a while. I'm still reeling from that. It's weird to say, but I would feel 
less bad if I wounded shot a doe just because there's, you know, there's a lot of them, but it's still, it's still terrible guys. That's my biggest fear. And it's, I am upping the odds so much with this self bow. I would say my general 10 yard group is less than a pie plate, but definitely not the size of softball. I mean, we're in between that somewhere. And there's always those outlier shots that just scare me. 10 yards is really where I need to be. Seven would be beautiful. I really think I can get it done with seven. Seven yards, you feel like you can just reach out and touch them. It's so close. I like this spot where I had the camera because there's a ton of brush around that's close. Uh, it wouldn't be that weird to set up a blind there. It wouldn't be that outstanding. The deer, I don't think, would notice it. But there's there's nothing there. So I, I got it. I only have two cameras with me. So I got to make a decision if I want to move this camera somewhere else where I think there's higher activity, or stick with it and just see what happens. I saw so much corn on the ground this morning. It was it was discerning. So I think I'm gonna actually move this. Decent little group there. There's that, you know, about a softball. Man, if I can just deliver that accuracy on the real thing, we'll be in good shape. Hey, bells don't count. You know, one of the things that I've learned, if I can turn to where my back is in line, I just I have more accuracy. It's like everything's lining up with my shoulders. I get that full draw. Just turn my hips. This all sounds great in theory, but <laughs> it's just it's just talking. Rolling up to where I put a camera this morning. I was thinking maybe it didn't didn't update, you know, it's got I got one of those cell cams. But all the corn I threw out is still here. And the feeder corn is still here. So I put a pile right there. Nothing has come to it. This would be a great spot though. Sorry. Camera's a little hot because my extremely white skin. This would be a great spot though to put a blind. I mean to back it up in one of these dark cedar uh you know hangovers would be tremendous like this right here from the theater right there it's like seven yards and i can play multiple winds there's another great spot right here for the east wind tuck in there i think i'm going to leave that camera there for now i'm curious to see what comes comes around in the evening we'll go to another spot spot that i've always wanted to get one with the bow i just haven't yet i think i'm going to set up one pop up pop up there and then I'm gonna do a little more recon to decide where I wanna put my other pop-up. So I got one pop-up up that we, we can't go scout out in tonight because the wind's not gonna be good. The wind's gonna be blowing right into the deer. But tomorrow morning, I think it will shift and then we'll be able to go in there. And I think tonight what I'm gonna do is sit the pond, the infamous pond. It is very hot now middle of the day, but I got me a nice oak tree. I got me some deer meat and some bucky snacks in that cooler. So I think I'm gonna hang out here, maybe chill in the hammock where I slept last night. Slept pretty good actually in the old hammock. Tied her up to the truck and we've got, oh, about five hours until we need to go out again. So I'm just gonna chill here until it's go time. We'll do some more scouting. We're getting ready to go out this evening. I took me a little Hot afternoon nap, kind of sweats and sweat, sweated and sitting in the hammock, but I've been keeping my clothes. The reason I'm talking about sweat and being hot is I'm, I'm keeping my clothes separate from like when I'm working during the day, um, you know, filling feeders or, or prepping the blinds and I'm sweating. Um, I'm keeping those separate. I'm hanging them up and I'm also, uh, I've been spraying them down. This should get the comments going right here. Do you guys think this stuff works? 
And I'm not just talking about this brand. I'm talking about, you know, all the different brands of this stuff. Um, the idea is it's like a, I think it's a carbon spray and it, it traps your scent, but deer's nose is so good. My experience, uh, just tell me, go with whatever the wind is. You know, there's gonna, gonna be those situations where the wind is, um, you know, it's gonna be calm, you're gonna have swirling wind, and that's where I think something like this could aid, aid you, but if you're not playing the wind right, you're gonna get busted. There's, there's just no doubt. I've seen it so many times, a white-tailed deer's nose is incredible. When I'm trying to get 10 yards, 12 yards, I got to be scent free or dang near close to it. It's it's pretty hard being in this uh, hot, sweaty condition. So we got some interesting weather with the wind. This app is not a sponsor, and I think I've mentioned this this app before, but this app's called Hunt Stand, and I mean anybody that's on a deer lease or has a, a property that you like to go to, or or even public land hunting. Um, you can do some of the things like, like Onyx, it's, um, with the properties and everything, you know, Onyx is, is a little better at all that stuff, but this shows you the wind directions, which is huge for whitetail hunters. I can look at all of my stands and places I've got, I've got, and I can just click the wind and I can look at future forecasting and really look at that like next 48 hours and see like, oh, okay, I won't be able to hunt here. This stand looks better. Um, and kind of position some things to where I'll give myself more opportunities. That's what I'm trying to do is just capitalize on uh, opening day with the deer being fresh and this colder weather coming in, but there's really nothing that is set up for a bow blind for an eastern wind. So I'm literally having to just do this um, on the fly here. All right, I've been jabbering on because it's still hot and I wanna go sit in a hot box blind, but it's 5.30 now. I think uh, our feeders are either going to go off at 6 or 6.30. I can't remember. But, God, I'm already sweating in this thing. I'm actually going to take this off and go with a t-shirt. I don't want to sweat this thing up. Even though I've got two of them, I don't want to ruin it with my sweat. out that feeder was going off at like 4 30 in the afternoon i went and checked it so it's kind of a wasted sit so now we're just going to drive around on the way i passed one of my favorite blinds i had a doe there but she had a fawn so don't really want to mess with her so we're going to grab the binos do a little stalking and see if i can just kind of peer around where that feeder is and uh, see if anything's moving in the evening
right, y'all. End of day one scouting. We don't have much to go on right now, but there is a doe that I have seen twice at the same spot. I'm going to tell you guys right now, if I get a doe with my, my bow, my self bow, I will be screaming like I just shot the biggest buck of my life. I'd love to get a doe just to, you know, break the ice with it. But if a uh, big old bucky comes out, we're going to fling an arrow too. So day two scouting, we're going to cook up some back straps here tonight at camp, fuel up, get on our little sack, sleep, get up, and we'll see what we see in the morning. I also saw a pig at one feeder tonight. Uh, you guys couldn't see it. It was really far away, but we could run into some pigs tomorrow. So I'm going to, I'm going to take the bow just in case. got windy last night I was swinging in that hammock so hopefully that's gonna give us a little bit of noise cover this morning Winds still a tad bit out of the south hopefully it doesn't screw this up we're gonna jump in the ATV head to our blind put a little bit of this scent attractant out and hopefully we see some deer close just felt that wind switch to the south as soon as it as soon as I could feel it in the back of the blind she smelled me we've got the perfect management buck right here I hope he sticks around I think he I 
I've seen that deer before. So after staring at him for a while, I realized that was a deer that I almost shot last year. All right, guys, fun sit this morning. Really fun. I mean, getting to watch that buck that I had seen uh, last year and surprisingly close last year too. He walked right by my blind. And I think I saw him again when I was with my dad. I was hoping he would show up so my dad could get to, to take him out. But I've seen him there before, and I've seen him at another blind that's close by that I really like. So I feel like he's a resident. He's had another year to grow his antlers and another year of no brow tines. So it is, uh, it's a great deer to be able to get a shot at and we definitely would have had an opportunity this morning. He hung around right at that 20 yard mark, which I'm not comfortable at. He was right in the corn. It was crazy. He walked right by all the uh, attractant and the corn that I put out and he went straight there. So that's kind of telling me he's routine, which is awesome. We're just gonna need to make some adjustments. The other thing is the blind. I mean, that is a huge deal. I am so glad that I just strung up my bow real quick. It was kind of when that <laughs> that buck was just sitting there forever. There was some brush blocking and I could kind of mess around. And I started, you know, just putting the bow up. And I was like, okay, is this going to work? And then I, I, as soon, immediately it was like, all right, this thing is poking here. All right, can I move back? Can I get an angle here? No. I'd have to cant the bow. Almost had a 45 um, it's just bad. So I'm so glad that I tested that. It's just unfortunate that we're going to have to, um, switch out that blind, but I may actually move it <sighs> at a ridiculous, I don't know. We're going to do some thinking. I also got some updates from my camera. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but there's three does there. 45 minutes of these does there. And that one's just sitting right in front of the camera. It's just that many does staring at you is a problem. You guys saw the difference between the doe and the buck. Like the buck, he didn't care. He looked up a couple times. He was probably looking at that doe that wanted to come in. She finally came in, but then she started selling me. And that's that's when she got real jumpy. She actually came back in a couple of times after she left initially, but uh, she was just way too jumpy. Let's see. Oh, there he is, man. I mean, he's a pretty decent little buck for the hill country. He's just no brows, no brows whatsoever. Something spooked him right there. Could have been the feeder going off. Oh, man, he's there for an hour, guys. He's there for a freaking hour. And he takes off. Pigs come in. Pigs have a night party. Glad to know they're still here. Uh, one doe there super early. Oh, wow. She's there really early. That's probably the same day. Uh, okay, and then here he is this morning. So this is same buck. See him this morning. I mean, he's just there. He's chowing down again almost an hour i'm going to make a cup of coffee and ponder on this decision and i'm going to leave you guys right here uh the next video um hopefully we have a deer down but maybe not this may this may be a long process but it's raw man it's raw but we got to get close so it's part of the fun thank you guys for tuning in don't forget to check out bucks hunting check out all the gear uh, link down below and get strapped up for the season. I'll see you guys on the next one.